In the closing days of World War II, the Navy faced a deadly threat from the air. A desperate enemy was taking a heavy toll of our ships with his suicidal attack. We threw everything we could fire into the skies. It wasn't enough. Our guns couldn't stop them soon enough. We suffered. We suffered tremendously. From this suffering and dreadful experience grew knowledge of the need for weapon systems able to repulse any airborne invaders. There could be no more of this destruction, no chance of successful suicidal missions by ruthless aggressors. The United States Navy has come a long way from those gallant fleets which subdued determined enemies during World War II. Then the Navy played a vital role in maintaining our nation's position of world leadership. The price of leadership is high. It is the price we must pay to ensure not only our own freedom, but that of millions of people in more than 60 countries throughout the world. leadership comes responsibility. Today we face a four ocean challenge and that challenge is being met by our modern Navy. Be ever watchful against attack from the air. That is a permanent order of the day, to be ready for tomorrow. Today, ships are equipped with the latest electronic advancements. Even the weapons of these ships have changed dramatically. Now, enemy aircraft can approach at supersonic speeds, not at a few hundred miles per hour. They can and do move faster than the human eye can detect. But advanced detection devices and trained crews respond with efficiency and determination. If there is an indication of an airborne threat, it will move at over 1,500 miles per hour and an extreme altitude. It is small and fast. Today, this is one answer. Missiles that can perform against any airborne or surface target. This is the story about a unique capability the capability of destroying airborne targets before they can destroy the ships of our Navy. The Navy entered the guided missile field late in World War II. 
The missile program was given the code name Bumblebee, and a task force of military, industrial, and university scientists and engineers began work that was to culminate in the development of the trio of operational surface-to-air missiles known as Terrier, Tartar, and Talos. Initial objective of the Bumblebee program in 1945 was a ramjet-powered missile. The first successful test of such an engine occurred in June of that year. Talos is powered by a solid fuel rocket booster and a 40,000 horsepower ramjet engine. It has a range of over 65 miles at extremely high altitudes. It is guided from the launcher to the vicinity of the target by means of a radar system operated from the ship. At booster burnout, the empty case falls away and the second stage rocket ignites. Talos is the most powerful of the Navy's surface-to-air missiles. Seven cruisers of the fleet carry Talos systems. Terrier was the first operational weapon in the program, coming into the fleet in 1956. The weapon, 26 feet long overall, and with a range of more than 20 miles, is powered by two stages of solid fuel rockets. The first stage, a separate booster rocket, supplies high thrust for a short period to launch and accelerate the missile to supersonic speeds. The second stage, called the sustainer, is part of the missile proper and maintains the velocity required to target impact. Terrier supersonic weapons will ultimately arm 39 warships, cruisers, frigates, and carriers, including three nuclear-powered ships, as well as serving navies of Italy, France, and the Netherlands. As the Navy's surface missile system fleet began to expand, further research continued to round out the capability spectrum. Tartar, the Navy's most compact surface-to-air missile, is designed to serve as the primary anti-aircraft battery aboard missile destroyers and escorts, and as the secondary battery on one class of heavy cruisers. The missile is 15 feet long, a foot in diameter, and has a range of more than 10 miles. Charter, carried by 39 ships of the line, offers a capability which was not thought possible in the early days of surface missile systems development. Charter also serves five other navies of the free world, France, Germany, Japan, Australia, and Spain. Today, there are about 80 ships in the surface missile fleet. Guided missile destroyers, which also carry guns and anti-submarine warfare weapons. Guided missile destroyer escorts. Frigates, about the size of World War II anti-aircraft cruisers. Cruisers carrying guided missiles. And attack aircraft carriers. The fleet's newest self-defense weapon system is called point defense. This simple and effective system is designed to be used on combatants, auxiliaries, and amphibious vessels. It can easily replace standard anti-aircraft guns and reduces crew requirements from more than 12 to only three. The launcher holds eight Sea Sparrow missiles and is controlled by a simple but reliable radar system. The radar display is superimposed over an optical display and the operator merely centers an aim dot in the field of view. Sea Sparrow, which can also be fired against moving surface targets, is 12 feet long, powered by a solid propellant rocket motor, and has a range of over five miles. Typical assignment, close-in defense of America's nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Enterprise. Because of substantial
substantial knowledge gained in development of the Polaris missile, a similar management approach, the Special Project, has been applied in the Navy's surface missile program. This, in turn, has led to establishment, under Naval Ordnance Systems Command direction, of the Naval Ship Missile Systems Engineering Station at Port Wyneme, California. This organization is charged with engineering and logistics support to the guided missile fleet. An example of this continuing support in the research and development area is the standard missile, a modular missile system interchangeable between Terrier and Tartar, and producing a greater capability in both of these weapons systems. In external appearance, the missile is closely similar to its predecessors. Developed and tested since 1964, the missile features all-electric, solid-state operation with no hydraulic or pneumatic systems. Standard missiles will ultimately be placed aboard more than 100 ships of the line. Another aid in maintaining a current state of the art for the SMS fleet is this missile research ship, the Norton Sound, which serves the engineering station as an operational laboratory in the development of new and modified systems and equipments. Inevitably, the advancement of technology increases the complexity of systems. While maintaining the current systems in a state of readiness, it will be the Navy's job to concurrently explore new methods of increasing that readiness. From our experience in World War II, we learned the need for readiness now. Guided missiles provide the full range of capabilities to protect the fleet. Target detection and tracking are far-reaching and accurate. Information is supplied to the plotting room rapidly. The weapons officer has all the necessary data for the proper type of defense. The missile selected is ready. Although the targets of tomorrow portend the need for faster responses, the Navy's surface missile fleet will have the capability it needs to operate anywhere in the world. Ready now and ready for tomorrow.